In this demo, we have two endpoints. One is home, another one is user. And the home page don't have any authentication, and the user page has authentication. We can sign in using username and password once it's done, log out. And we can also sign in using Google or other social medias. At the end of the video, we can know how to add other social medias for the signing purpose. App that supports login using both a username and password, and Google, and other social media. First, head over to Spring Initializer. We're going to create a new project using Maven, Java, and the latest version of Spring Boot. I'm using version 3.5.3 .3 in this video, but anything recent is fine since should work. Name the project however you like. Totally up to you. Now, for dependencies, we only need three. Spring Web, Spring Security, Spring Security, and OAuth 2 Client. These are enough to set up a working backend with both traditional and social login support. Once the project is ready, download it, unzip it, and open it in your favorite IDE, maybe Intelligent or Eclipse. Next, inside the SRC folder, create two packages, one for your configuration and the other for your controller. Let's start with the controller. Inside that package, create a simple class and annotate it with REST controller. We'll define two endpoints. One is slash home, which will be open to everyone. And the other is slash user, which will require authentication. That's it for now. Now jump over to the configuration package. Create a new class and annotate it with configuration. Here's where we configure our security. Inside the class, define the security filter chain. This is how Spring Security knows which endpoints to protect and how to handle login. We're going to allow public access to slash home, but we'll lock down slash user so only authenticated users can access it to handle login we'll enable two options form login that's the default spring security login page http basic login mostly useful for testing build the security filter chain object which spring security uses to filter incoming http requests and add throws exception to the method. Start your application and open your browser and test both the home and user endpoints where it's working properly. Now in security filter chain method, add OAuth login with defaults, which lets users log in with Google, Facebook, or any other provider you have added. That's all we need to configure security. Time to configure the application. Add username and password for Spring Security. For OAuth, add client ID and client secret for Google. You can get this from Google Console. Next, go to the browser. This is just for Google login method. Other social media, you have Sparrow Ides. Head over to the Google Cloud Console. If you haven't already, create a new project. Name the project and click on Create. Dot select the created project. Head towards APIs and Services. Now, in the Credentials tab, click on Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID. Next, go to the OAuth consent screen section, give app name. Choose external as the user type. Add your email. Accept the terms and conditions and click on create.
Now click on Create OAuth Client ID. In Application Type, select Web Application. And in the field for Authorized Redirect URIs, add the default. Redirect ORI that Spring Security uses when handling Google Login. Click Create, and Google will give you two values. A client ID and a client secret. Copy both of them. Now, head back to your project. Open application.properties and paste them. Save it, restart your app, and now, when you try to log in, you should be able to sign in using your Google. Want to add Facebook, GitHub, or other providers? You can. Just register your app with that platform, get the client ID and secret, and paste it into your properties file the same way. Just replace Google with the name of the provider. And that's it. In next video, we'll find what the data we get from the client, like Google, Facebook, GitHub, and how to customize the login button. You now have a working Spring Boot app with login using both username, password, and Google OAuth. From here, you can build out your app however you want. Thanks for watching. If this helped you out, feel free to like, share, and subscribe.